developer, wow. developer housing is a, a special way of playing the design game. Uh, I worked for a design firm in, with its home base in Los Angeles and uh, operated the Washington office, which covered the East Coast. Uh, the work that we did uh, was directly related to developers and builders uh, in residential housing. We worked with the uh, developer in the design phase in uh, uh, purchasing property all the way through uh, the construction and modeling uh, and the uh, sales of the homes. The company I worked for was a uh, portion of a large company called Environmental Systems International, uh, which was on the stock exchange, a stock company. It was started by Barry Burkus uh, of B.A. Burkus Architects, and it, it grew as he tried to uh, serve the shelter industry, uh, all from his one firm. He felt that he could better serve them by having all the consultants under one roof. Uh, I brought with you uh, some of the tools of the trade. Uh, whenever we went to see the client, we always had to wear our Superman t-shirt. <laughs> this is uh, KFA, it's Keith French Associates, and this is uh, Keith French, he's a big guy over six foot tall with a great red beard. And also when we went to the job site, we had to wear a uh, hard hat. When you work with uh, developers, you have to be aggressive and be able to throw a lot of ball. Let's get into some of the slides here. Let me kill the lights and turn on the... How do we do that? This is where we worked and played. This is the office that held the, West Co uh, the East Coast uh, Division of Keith French Associates and Barry Burkus, uh, B.A. Burkus Architects, ESI, uh, Land Tech, uh, ESI Graphics, all the divisions uh, which serve the uh, developers. And then right outside in the street, uh, we played volleyball. Every Friday, drank a case of beer in the afternoon. Right over to the side there is the CNO Canal, which runs through Georgetown. Uh, we worked hard and we uh, played hard, and there's a few of us left alive. <laughs> this is a, kind of the feeling of the interior space. Uh, there was no ceiling; it went right up to the to the rafters of the one-story unit, and uh, you can see that. Uh, we didn't have Hamiltons. Uh, we had three quarter inch plywood with a Borco cover on it and, and the rule screwed on to it. Worked quite well. This is a job called Main Street <laughs> down in Atlanta, Georgia. It's 570 acre PUD. Uh, we did the conceptual design work for the uh, PUD and then went into uh, design development and construction of the recreation model area and, and the uh, production area. I don't know if you're familiar with the residential development. The production area is the area that they build houses for people to live in. The model area is the area that they 
keep just for display, and eventually we'll, people will live there after they no longer have to have a sales area. And most of them have a very uh, well-developed recreation program to uh, make people want to live there. This one, we created a large recreation. We had a 100-acre park, uh, and I talked them out of building a golf course uh, and into having a more of a low-key recreation. They had a lot of uh, good woods, which uh, would have been badly cut up by a recreation uh, or a golf course, and the two adjacent developments had golf courses. On the, uh, this is the recreation building, which serves right now as the uh, sales building. We'll later convert. Uh, and the next slide you'll see is the pool, which is on the left side of it. Over here is the, uh, um, how quickly you forget the terms. Uh, it's condominium, okay? Right, it's the uh, eightplex, and this is the model area so that there's, uh, we've got a lot of things happening out in the street. Here's the uh, rec pool area which overlooks the lake to the right. This is a, a job called La Greens in, far in uh, outside of New Haven, Connecticut. The original name was the Presidential Greens, but uh, Nixon uh, made some trouble just before this opened, so they quickly changed the name to the Greens. Uh, on the right is the, uh, this is a 18-plex. The left shot is at the center. Uh, the shot on the right is one of the uh, appendages at the end. There are four appendages, uh, units to step down. Flats in the center here, and on the bottom side of the unit, downhill side, there's garages under. And on the top here, which faced out under one of the greens, the uh, garages were detached and forward so that courts formed behind, between the unit and the garage. This is in the model area. You can see some of the effects that we create in order to sell it. Uh, those rhododendrons are in front of a two-car garage and you're standing in the driveway. Uh, the lights are in the driveway, the pine tree is in the driveway, the bench is in the driveway. Uh, the main idea in modeling is to lull the people into uh, believing that this is the best there is and uh, anything that detracts you uh, somehow uh, ameliorate or put into a park-like uh, situation. These, uh, here's another balcony, a different type of unit, but on the same building, and the garage is underneath it. Uh, the birch tree will stay there, but it's uh, to the side of the... And this is looking, in other words, the street is out here on the other side of this fence. We threw up the fence in order to uh, contain the uh, prospective buyer. In other words, he goes in one entrance and you direct him through all the units and don't let him back to his car till he's gone back past the salesman again, giving the salesman another opportunity to uh, make a sale. Excuse me, we had another division called uh, ESI uh, Japan, which was uh, one architect in residence in Tokyo, in conjunction, worked in conjunction with Nippon Homes. Uh, this particular site we developed for uh, a uh, recreation community, golf course, etc. These are just a series of the uh, pretty drawings that we prepared as site analysis. With the 
resulting uh, golf course. You can see where it's located on the right in the knee of Japan, by the key map on the side. Uh, this is Tierra Santa, which is in uh, the outskirts of San Diego, out near Charger Stadium. And it was a uh, 12,000, or excuse me, 1,200 acre uh, development, PUD. And this model area, they showed six different building types. So it was quite, a, quite extensive. Uh, they had a patio home, a zero lot line home. They had uh, two different single family, uh, one fourplex uh, and one eightplex, all displayed in this one uh, rather large space. And we had to control their circulation and try to make it as pleasant an experience. Uh, You'll see in some later slides where they had little signs that went with some of these amenities. They're called disclaimers. <laughs> this does not go with your house. This is a, we can provide this pool, if so desired, at additional cost. But we tried to show them what some of the potentials were uh, to their spaces. Uh, a lot of pottery, a lot of uh, terraces. Part of the Burkus, this is a Larwin home here, uh, one of his best clients, and gave him a lot of latitude. Barry Burkus was one of the, or his literature tells me that he was one of the developers of the uh, volume space and residential design uh, in the, uh, what they call the uh, plus rooms, the uh, sunken living rooms and the uh, bonus spaces and the indoor-outdoor effect is on the right. Okay, another project we had was for uh, Hugh Hefner. This is uh, his West Coast, uh, I forget what they call it, a uh, Playboy Mansion, I think. And it, it has this great sloping lawn that looked right onto a golf course, which was right beyond those eucalyptus uh, in the left slide, in the right slide. So he wanted to have a little privacy. So he devised a mound that separated and created the mound with soil excavated for ponding, created a series of little ponds. And underneath the mound, by the soil loss method, we uh, built a cavern with uh, underground hot and cold uh, baths. Uh, and the ground form of these baths were uh, formed into the uh, shape of two human bodies. <laughs> One of the entrances was through the waterfall in uh, it was also, uh, there's another entrance there. Is that, this is just the firm name that you didn't have to do with? Yeah, the, the we, uh, California office. No, the California office. When I use the term we, that's Keith French Associates uh, and, and Barry Burkus Associates. But uh, a lot going on in a small space and really made it interesting. Uh, also, we had tennis court that worked out the uh, a bar and uh, plaza area overlooking the court. So you don't need 12-foot fence around the court for it to work. Helps have a bar there, though. Okay. Uh, Another project, this one is uh, in Orange County, California, and uh, which had single family and uh, four plexus. You can, out there, everything has to be done, nothing is existing. Uh, 
these uh, olive trees were are brought in like that on the left side, the big trees. Uh, you can see in the background kind of the existing situation. Orange County is kind of like a barren desert. And you can see the, the way we model in the street here. You can see the fire hydrant. Uh, there's, that's a cul-de-sac. The sidewalk is already in for the cul-de-sac, the, the curving one. This is the green space uh, that goes through. That's pretty much what it is before, you know, in the distance there. Uh, another feature of a, a of the uh, the trap situation in modeling is the fences, which we try to soften somehow. In other words, that's to prevent you from going back to your car before saying goodbye to the salesman. Uh, you can see it's an artificial stream that softens the effect of having that wall there. People are less likely to cross a little stream than they are to cross a fence, I think. And the artificial bridge, there actually is no water going in there, but we put up the handrails and, you know, it's a whole different world of design. Yes. This is a, we had to have a connection between the the pool area and the housing. <laughs> and uh, I think you had to sign an insurance policy before you came down. But uh, it had to be done cheaply and uh, that's the way it was done. More uh, terrace areas developed, showing them what potential there was. So another trap. Or the Burkus, uh, Burkus look. Uh, another thing about modeling is you, you try to make it look like somebody just left or is just about to come out and eat or read a book or something. Cups and saucers, uh, the whole thing. Here's a, I've got a couple before and after shots here. Here's a before shot of the street and, the, and uh, Here's the after shot. I had to give them a sense of arrival, uh, put in some street trees, put some green paving, or green marking on the pavement and an arrow. You know, you have arrived. Flags. The whole uh, shtick. Another before shot of the model area. And uh, after. Before shot of the patio area. And after. This is up at Mammoth Mountain where we had an erosion problem, so we, the client brought in all these boulders and peppered the slope with them. This is, uh, I think, Via Verde, California. Hydro seeded the slopes with uh, three or four types of uh, perennial flowers into the model area. It's one of our, this, he had one of the other offices out there in Orange County, uh, Larry Klinger. He's just showing you how effective it is, right? It looks like somebody uh, should be sitting there. A view uh, out of one of the entrances to the green belt. A lot of volumes in, inside these spaces. Want to buy it? indoor outdoor relationships.
And you see how close that unit is on the right. You know, talk about zero lot line, that's about three feet from one unit to the other. So we had to really do something to soften that transition. Uh, this is an apartment, uh, didn't do many apartments. This is on the left is an apartment complex. It also had a daycare center as part of the complex. Did a little top lot. For this is uh, Oak, uh, Oak Grove, I think the name of it is. Sometimes you can go too far on softening the look of the architecture. This is the approach. It was, that's a street. That mound in the center is a street. The sidewalks are already in. So, and I don't remember whether they put the street in on this one and just covered it with soil or what. But anyway, the, it makes a nice separation to have that mound in there. You give a nice feeling of enclosure. But the, you have trouble seeing the units. I think they might have gone a little overboard. <laughs> There's a unit back there somewhere, the sign tells you. But it, it really is a good selling device uh, to spend all that money on uh, putting it finished look, trying to make it look 10 years old, the environment. Uh, this is a, a ranch where they were just selling lots. Uh, it's called Berkshire Ranch. It's not in the Berkshires. Uh, and so we had to make a, a strong impression right at the gate. On the left is the office, and on the right is the uh, kind of the gatekeeper, the ranch manager's uh, house. And it's right on a lake. Uh, and uh, the lake is a, uh, it's about four and a half feet deep. It's a layer of polyethylene. A layer of uh, soil and a layer of chicken wire, and then three inches of concrete. Add water. And the edge there is what's called soil cement. Yeah, right. Between the grass and the water is soil cement. It's a mixture of soil and cement. Here's another shot of it. This job, which I'm going to run through quickly. Uh, was done by Richardson's office out there in California. And I think POD with Landscape Architects, it's called the Arbors, and it's the most effective job. That has, yeah, this is the exterior, and I'm, it's gonna be quite a shock when you come inside. Uh, this is the street side, these people parked on the street. The other units that parked on the inside had a streetscape like this where they approached the garages. Okay? So all the cars were exterior. And there were a few penetrations. There's the, one of the penetrations, which I'm going to go in with you, uh, showing a little of it. Movement, those units. This is a view, and see how he angled the pavement there so it seemed like a further distance. This is looking back out. Here's the shot looking in. See how the wedge-shaped pavement looks? Uh, it's not linear at all. And then a little fountain inside. This is a view. You can see the linear by looking at the right-hand side of that slide. See how linear they are, but they move inside. Great movement. Really carefully done. Exploding into spaces like the pool, narrowing up every view taken into consideration. Little surprises. Those are both the same shot, one's a little closer. See how it changes as you approach it. change in grade. It goes right back down again the other side. But it's important to have that. Just wooden stucco.
It's hard to imagine that this is all cinder block. <laughs> Explode into little spaces where they can recreate. Okay, this is another model area. Uh, I forget the name right now, but also done by Richardson where he totally develops even the sandbox and the shovel out in the sand. It's in a model area. There's nobody living there. Really beautifully done. He really gets, lulls you into the idea that, you know, this is where I belong. There's a disclaimer. See it there, that sign? It says, this is not part of the unit. That's extra. And it tells you what, all landscaping, all, you know. And there's a parking lot right the other side of that fence, which is softened by the the design of the fence, having it open yet closed. See it? Mm -hmm. Another top lot, for the, this one they can use. This is the, around the, between the production area, which is all sand, and the uh, swimming pool, this, this fence screen. Okay, and we leave California, Los Angeles, and head out to Hawaii. That's Cocoa Head out there in the distance. That's what happens when you work for a national firm. You've got to have your division managers meeting somewhere exciting, right? This is uh, Kala Moana, I think, uh, park on one of the bays there. A shot of the, that water's blue, isn't it? Some of the housing, there, that's a fence over on the right. It conforms to the code. <laughs> it wasn't allowable, so he uh, worked it in as a structure rather than as a fence. Architect lived there. Here's what's happening to some of the hillsides. Some, uh, Hawaii has a uh, very strong zoning where you can do nothing and where you can do anything practically. It's changing, but uh, the agricultural zone is very large, at least on Oahu, where Honolulu is. And uh, so all the, all the construction is in a very small area around the perimeter. Uh, but they're creeping up into the mountains, which aren't suitable for agriculture. And you can see the, the potential problems for uh, erosion control and uh, everything else. One benefit they have is uh, not much snow. There's that same project in the distance there, the Esplanade. Here's a job that Berkus did, Marina's Cove. Uh, more volumes and uh, this one is modeling was over with. Uh, little amenity on the uh, waterway which went out to the ocean. Here's one that uh, the same developer, Grant, did, only uh, he tried to copy the drawings and uh, cram everything into a little space. This is a model area, and this is exactly what not to do, is he's got so many conflicting things happening and crammed into a, a space that visually is not appealing. But there's a good reason to do to do it, which I'll end up with here. You can see we made a fence of uh, rebars, <laughs> and they're curved over so you, they're not so it's non-climbable, and it you can't get into the pool without opening the door. All these decks up in the air, everything up in the air. Here's why: the view to Diamond Head. This, this happens all the time out there. This is the Dole Pineapple Plantation up on the top between the two mountain ranges. And uh, some of the beauty of that the developers can't get at. Ooh, ah. Ah. That's it. <laughs> 